Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where we will teach you how to design post-tensioned concrete slabs using a generated tendon workflow and RAM concept. In this video, we are going to be focusing on generating your post-tension tendons and performing your initial calculation while specifying your calculation options. Now for the generated workflow approach, you're going to model all of your banded or distributed tendons in your tendon parameters layer, as well as defining their profile points. Then to complete this process, you're then going to want to generate your program tendons using the generate program tendon command. Now this will be used to create tendons on the generated tendon layer from the objects that were created on the tendon parameters layer. To use this tool, we're going to go up to our standard toolbar and then click on the Generate Program Tendons icon. Now it's going to let you know that tendons were created and we'll go ahead and click OK. Now to review your tendon layout, we're going to go to the Layers menu bar item. We're going to select our Latitude Pre-Stressing and then our Generated Latitude Standard Plan. And we can see that all of our tendons have now been created. We're going to repeat this process for the longitude direction as well. Now after reviewing your tendon layout, you may want to go back to your tendon parameters plan and adjust the objects in that plan and then regenerate your tendons if it did not generate everything that you were wanting it to. In addition to that, for your banded tendons, you can also see that the program automatically created the added tendons to basically skew off your discontinuous tendons. At this point in your workflow, you are now ready to perform your design. Now the generated tendon layers contain the individual tendons generated from the objects modeled on the tendon parameters layer. The generated individual tendons cannot be edited, but they can be selected and copied to the manual tendon layer for further manipulation if required. We are now at the point in our workflow where we're ready to perform our initial design. This process will include specifying the calculation options, performing the initial calculation, and adjusting our tendon geometry as required. Before performing the calculation in RAM concept, you're first going to want to specify your calculation options. In the criteria menu, you're going to select calculation options and we're going to go to the general tab. Here we can find a variety of pieces of information we can enter. The first one is to auto stabilize the structure in the X and Y directions. If this item is checked, RAM concept will apply braces in the X and Y global axis directions to stabilize the structure, which would not be appropriate for a model with induced horizontal loading. Next, we have an option to create viewable self-dead loading. If this item is checked, RAM concept will illustrate the self-dead loading on the self-dead loading layers. This option will have no effect on the calculation. Next, we have to include supports above the slab in self-dead loading. If this option is selected, RAM concept will include the weight of supports which will be either columns or walls above the slab as loads. Now, as a word of caution, if you have modeled any columns or walls above the slabs as dummy elements to assist in the modeling of any loads on your model, you may want to ensure that this option is not selected. Next, we have to include the tendon component in the punch check reaction. If this option is selected, RAM concept will include the vertical component of the tendon force within the punch check zone, which often reduces the punching check reaction. Next, we have the check capacity of longitudinal user reinforcement option. If this option is selected, RAM concept will perform a check of the existing user reinforcement and post tensioning without adding any additional program reinforcement. All failed locations will be reported in the status plans. Next, we can select a design and live load reduction code, and here you're going to want to select the appropriate design code in live load reduction options. Finally, we have our zero tension iterations options, which pertain to the design of mat foundations, and also our reinforcement layout and detailing parameters. These options will control how RAM concept creates the reinforcement layout and plan. 
After review and customize all of your calculation options, including your design code and live load reduction parameters, we're going to click OK. We are now ready to perform the full calculation. Up in the standard toolbar, we're now going to click on the Calc All icon to run through the design. Now after you change any model geometry or loading and RAM concept, you will need to regenerate the finite element mesh before proceeding to the full calculation. Now during the calculation, you may get a series of analysis warnings. We're going to review all of these warnings and address them before we do our final calculation. For now, we're going to go ahead and continue on through each of these warnings, and then we'll review them after the full calculation is complete. Now, the post-tensioning slab design in RAM concept using the generated tendon approach will be an iterative process, so you may have to perform a calculation, review your warnings, make some adjustments, and then re-perform it to see how you're doing. Once the calculation is complete, you're going to notice that a warning and error list will be reported at the right-hand side of your screen. To achieve some additional information on each of these items, you can just double-click on each one, and it'll go ahead and highlight the tendon that is causing that particular warning or error. Let's go ahead and attack this first group of warnings. Here we're getting several of the tendons within our slab depressions have a radius that is less than the minimum allowable. The minimum allowable tendon radius is defined within the materials criteria, so we have two options here. We could either adjust the profile points for these tendons, or we can adjust our material properties. For these particular tendons, let's go ahead and adjust their geometry. Now again, on the generated tendon layer, we can't actually modify the tendon layout, so we're going to have to go back to our tendon parameters layer and then regenerate our tendon plan. So in my Layers menu, I'm now going to select Latitude Pre-Stressing, and then I'm going to go to my Latitude Tendon Parameters Standard Plan. I'm going to zoom in at these locations, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select those profile points that basically go from the main slab to the slab depression. I'm going to right-click and say Selection Properties, and then I'm going to increase their cover requirements to 3.25. And then that should go ahead and adjust those a little bit more appropriately. Let's go ahead and proceed on with the list. And here we have a tendon that's outside of the slab. Now, based on the trimming requirements you had set up and the cover requirements you set up in your design strip layers and also your tendon parameters layers, you may get a situation where a tendon is popping out of the slab profile. In that situation, you're going to be given this warning and you are going to want to adjust your profile points. Now this is occurring for our longitude tendon, so I'm going to go to layers menu. I'm going to select longitude pre-stressing and then again for the tendon parameters plan. Now here what I can do is I could select this option here for my support polylines. I'm going to right click and do selection properties again. And here I'll go ahead and increase their cover requirements. Now let's go ahead and proceed to the next type of warning. Here I have another tendon radius issue. This is happening for my longitude tendons. So again, I'm going to go ahead and adjust my profile points. And finally, we are going to go to our last group of warnings. And what we're finding here is that we have a design strip with conflicting strip configurations. Basically, this warning is generated for the slab within the pore strip because between grid lines 5 and 6. Since the design strips modeled in this area are defined as a reinforced concrete slab, while the rest of the slab is defined as a post-tension slab, we are issued this type of warning. 
this model and configuration was intentional. So we're going to go ahead and ignore this warning in this and future calculations. Now that we have walked our way through all of the warnings and errors list, we are going to want to regenerate our post tension tendons and then reperform the calculation to ensure that everything has been addressed. Now, as the calculation is performed, we're still getting the one analysis warning that one strip has a different configuration. And we're going to go ahead and bypass this because, again, our modeling was intentional. This concludes the process for performing the initial design. You're now ready to perform the final design and review the calculation status and other pertinent information for post-tension slab design. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.